Hey guys, it's Misty Eyes. And Amanda Austin. And we're here with a get made up with Misty. Amanda Austin is one of my close sisters. My Actually, this bitch took me to the emergency room when I did not want to go. That was an experience. That was, <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> not fun. Oh, remember when the guy was shoving the gauze into my... I had a pimple that got really big and infected and I could barely walk. And I was not going to the emergency room. And she's like, we're going. And we were there all night. Yeah, she's my sister, is what I'm trying to say. I love her. Um, but we're doing a get, get made up with Misty, and um, you're going to love it. It was fun. Now you can watch it. Here is something I want you to try. Monistat? <laughs> <laughs> it's a foundation primer. Really? It's like really Monistat? Yeah. How much do you use? I, just, I used a lot just now, but you don't have to use that much. Yeah, just... Like dab it all over. It makes your face feel like porcelain. It's an amazing foundation primer. And it's probably cheap. Yeah, it's like six bucks. And it's like mostly silicone, I think. Oh yeah, I feel it. it makes it so good. Smooth. So we had no vaginal chafing. Chaffing? Chafing? Anybody has a yeast infection, we're all safe. All safe. Well, I think that's a medicated one. This oh. is not medicated. Oh, I had about the medicated one. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... <laughs> this is... This <laughs> Medicated. This is just for rubbing or chafing or whatever. It's a skin protection. Yeah, it's just thing. like... It just feels like a little layer of silicone. So amazing. Just naturalness. Can you... Follow me around with this light all the time. <laughs> it's amazing, right? That's <laughs> good. Now I can use it. Yes. So I'm glad you were off your first show today. We could play. Well, yeah, second. Oh, you did, you did flip flops today? No, I had to wear brunch. Oh. But then we were close for dinner, which I'm fine with because I managed all weekend. Yeah. I only got four hours sleep last night. You got a good nap today? And then I got a two hour nap. I woke up and I thought it was like the middle of the night. I had overslept. Oh no. Because it was starting to get dark. Uh -huh. You can tell the days are getting shorter already. Yeah, because it used to wasn't dark till 8 p.m. and now it's like dark 7 something. Mm -hmm. Yay, summer's almost over. It's still hot though. Yeah, we got about another six, six or eight weeks of really hot weather. I wasn't sure. So what are you doing tonight? Uh, songs I'm doing, tonight's theme is cover songs of male, female versions of- Male songs. Yeah, female covers of It's a songs. man's world. So for the first show I'm gonna do Taylor Dane Can't Get Enough of Your Love, which is a cover of Barry White. Oh, okay. From the 60s, I think is when that originally came out, and then she covered it in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then for the second show, I'm going to do Anastasia, You Give Love a Bad Name, which is a Bon Jovi cover from the 80s. All right. Well, that's how I got the theme. <laughs> Anastasia's album. Yeah, or, I love her. I, she was, back before she put that album out, I even loved her. Yeah. She's my favorite. She's one of the unsung mm -hmm. singers, I think, of. And when did she come out in the nineties? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, her first really, her first single was "I'm Out of Love" in late ninety seven or eight. Because mm -hmm. that one was kind of rock and rollish a little bit. Yeah. She sounded like Taylor Dane, mm -hmm. and everyone was like, "Oh my gosh, she's who white. I loved." Yeah. Taylor Dane too. Yeah, I think they're cousins or something. I don't know. But I love Anastasia. But it's funny because I think I might, next week we're doing Broken Hearts. Mm -hmm. No, no, two weeks we're doing Broken Hearts. And I was like, I might do Adele. So I was going to do an Adele cover of a boy song today. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do Adele two weeks in a row, three weeks in a row, whatever. Um, and then I saw you did Anastasia and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm not going to do that either. So but I'm not you do doing... a different song though, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. You do, um, Dream On, or? I do Dream On from the album, and I do, um, Sweet Child of Mine. Oh, yeah. Guns and Roses. Mm -hmm. They're my favorite, too. 
I was like, ah, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm not actually doing the theme for the first show this week. Which is so right what are you doing for? I'm just gonna do boobs. Oh, you, you gotta have kind of boobs. That is a cover, right? Um, oh, you mean for the first show? That's a cover too, though. There's been like. It's a cover, but not a male cover. Yeah. I don't, I don't think a guy sung that song. <laughs> well, Although it would make well, sense. Well, maybe. <laughs> you gotta have boobs. Maybe he was a male at one time. B O O B S. I forgot because we have we have two that are kind of similar. We have covers and then we have yeah female covers of male songs. So. Yeah, it's a man's world. Yeah, yes. What's your favorite thing about doing makeup? Uh, when it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Finished. <laughs> Complete. The only thing I hate more than doing makeup is taking it off. Oh my god, I'm the same way. Like, I'll sit with my full face on for hours. Yeah, sometimes I'll come home and I'll get completely out of drag. I'll eat, watch TV, <laughs> yep. take the dogs out. Do Facebook, do Instagram, do Twitter. Watch a movie. <laughs> take off your eyelashes and wig. Yeah, and sometimes I'll wipe my lips off at least if I'm gonna eat. And then... Like, and it's it, 8 it, o'clock in the morning, you're like, fuck, yeah. my face is still on. Sometimes I even lay a towel down on the pillows and on the couch and sleep like two hours and then get up and Rewipe. wipe it off. But I have this new, well, it's not new, I've had it a while, and the more I've used it, the easier it's gotten. It's called a magic erase. It's like a... The pink towel? Yeah. And I, I didn't like, like it. it. I didn't like it when I first got it, but I think there's like... You have to know how to do it, so oh, trial and wrong. trial and error. I mean, it doesn't the the pancake foundation doesn't all come off with it, but yeah. it's really amazing to get like your eyeliner and your um, mascara. It's just a washcloth. Yeah, but there's something about the way the texture the is, fibers. and when you put hot water, and the more you use it, the better it works. So oh. like when it's brand new, it barely worked at all, and now that I've used it like a hundred times, it works. it's in my shower, but I never better. use it. And you do it's dishwasher, not dishwasher, washing machine safe? Yeah, but I take in, um, I don't wash it for like a long time until it gets really nasty. Wow. Like I'll rinse it out, but I won't wash it. Yeah. And then I'll take and soak it in OxyClean. Okay. And then like do a Get couple, it real clean. Yeah, get it real clean. And you're supposed to put it in the dryer before you, did you do that the first time? Uh -uh. That, it doesn't work until you put it in the dryer the first time. That's what they told me when I got it. Well, so that might not be why you're not having good. You have to um, run it through the dryer. Have to try it again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is, but. And you literally don't use soap. To, usually, I'll take most of it off that way the first time, mm -hmm. and then I'll take a makeup wipe and get the rest yeah. of it off. And then I'll. But get, you use soap on the washcloth or no? No, 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 no just hot water. That's so weird to me. And then I'll get in the shower after I wipe it off with a makeup wipe and wash it with my face one last time with like shampoo. Yeah, I love washing my face with shampoo. Or just soap. I have a little thing of Dawn in the shower. <laughs> Someone told me last night that they've been using, um, Dawn has this, it's purple, it's called Olive Olay Hand Soap Dish Soap. And they said it's got like Olive Olay in it. And it's oh. left their skin, they used it to take off their makeup and it left their skin so soft nice nice and clean and soft. that would be amazing i like it dries me out it's you know it's so yeah it does so i might try some of that i but usually if, use shampoo but. but if it's safe for animals in the ocean right like to remove the oil spill mm -hmm. from ducks or whatever but i think the, the regular version it just removes so much crud of the oil from my face that it leaves me a little dry yeah i just have to make sure i you know really Moisturize when I'm done. You'll have that problem in a couple of years. Um, I'm only four years behind <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> How are you going to do your makeup tonight? Um, I'm just gonna do. Normally on Sunday night, I have already have any makeup on. Because so you're a character. Yeah, because I do. So you're gonna wear a lot of makeup tonight. Um, I'm gonna do my normal drag face tonight. The original Amanda Austin. All right, so Amanda Austin is one of my sisters, one of my very good friends, and we work together many places. We do. We do. And have for a while. And have for a long time, yes. Um, and you moved here from North Carolina. Uh -huh, I lived in Charlotte. I moved here, um, July was nine years ago. Yeah. And I met you about a year and a half after I moved here. Yeah, 
because you came to Tranny Palace and Drag. Mm -hmm. And we met. And then like almost immediately, I started performing regularly in your show with the mm -hmm. guest. And then eventually bumped up to a cast member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we worked. At Lips? At my, yeah, we worked together at Lips. Well, we don't work together, but we both work there. We work together sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'm there on Wednesdays. We're not there regularly. Sometimes I'm there on Saturdays, but and those, are, the fill in, those yeah. are days I do fill in on the floor or hosting, so. Yeah. And she's my sister. And we've worked at, where else have we worked together? We worked Flip at- Flip Flops? Well, way back in the beginning, we worked at, um, I had you at- Beer Garden? Beer Garden, yeah. Yep. And then when that ended, like a year and a half later, the Flip Flops gig started, which we're starting our fourth year now. Yeah. And we had you there. We had you at Progress. Uh-huh. You don't have to unlock your phone to do that, by the way. Yeah, I know. Oh. Sometimes though, when I got, it won't, it doesn't like to own me. See? Oh wow. Which one do you have? The six. six. Yeah. I have the six plus and John has a six plus S. Headphones and everything more. I was like, you're getting an iPhone. He's like, I don't want one. The new one's coming out, I think, in August, September. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I started getting these jump messages from T-Mobile saying something. I went and I was like, what are these messages? And she's like, oh, something about how we pay for half the phone or something if you want to upgrade. And I'm like, I'll just wait until the next phone comes out. And she's right. like, it's coming out in like two months. I was like, well, good thing I'm waiting. AT&T doesn't do that. You know, they used to pay for, like, this phone's like $1,200 and they used to pay all but like two or $300 of it uh -huh. if it was time to upgrade. And the last time I got the one I had now, they don't do it anymore. Sucks. They had to. They like. Oh no! We just financed the entire twelve hundred dollars into your payment. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> but I got one anyway. I've never had AT and T, but I hate Sprint. I had Sprint. Um, no, I had Verizon for years before AT and T, and it worked okay when I lived in North Carolina. And then when I moved here. The first year or so I was here, it worked okay, and then I started having problems with it, so I switched. And the first year I had AT&T, I had problems with it, and then I haven't had any problems since then. Were you on cast when Diamond Dunhill lived here? No. She... I think she was visiting a couple times when I was doing guest spots, uh -huh. but she... Or she hadn't left yet, probably. Yeah, I think she was a. I think I started about the time she was leaving. Because when I started, it was cast was um, Latrice, Noel, yeah. um, Nikki White, and Nikkei, Nikkei and Twat. Yeah. And Noel. Yeah, I said Noel. Oh. Because Noel's been with me 11 years now. And then Latrice left for traveling for Rapal. Mm -hmm. And that's when... You got her spot? No, I think Nicole got... Nicole Halloween. No, wait, no, there was somebody else. Nicole got McKay's spot. And I got Nikki's spot. Who got Latrice's spot? I don't remember, girl. <laughs> it's been a minute. Oh, Athena. Athena got Latrice's yeah, yeah, spot. Yeah, Athena. Because she Latrice Latrice. went to record RuPaul's for a month. And she filled in while she was while gone. She was gone. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have every Sunday for a month. Maybe more. And then Latrice came back for a minute. And then when she started traveling, I just gave it to Athena. Yeah. So here you go, girl. It's all you. It's all you, boo-boo. Yeah. That was a while ago. Yeah, that was what, four years ago? Two thousand five years ago. Latrice was season five, right? I think so. 
I'm the preacher season five, and it's now about to record season nine. Mm -hmm. So, so four years yeah. ago. But she was gone the summer before. For filming. So it was actually five years ago this summer she was gone. Yeah. At band camp. She went to color guard camp. <laughs> yeah. I Remember was like, girl, one? I know where you're really going. Remember that one time at band camp when I was on RuPaul? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she really, it was a believable alibi because yeah, she yeah. was actually a color guard teacher in yeah. a high school. And she was gone for like a month in the summer, so that's when they do all that anyway. Yeah, they she, do their band camp, their color guard camps in the summertime. But the coincidence was uncanny. Right. I was like, girl, and she's like, okay, I can tell you because you're my boss, but please keep my alibi. And then remember the next summer, Athena went to Greece for like a month. Uh huh. Like at the same time, and everybody thought she was on mm -hmm. track race, but she wasn't. Yep, and then I went to England, Alaska and England for a month and everyone thought I was on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I'm like, I'm posting pictures right. from where I am. I think Athena was too, but you know people. Yeah. They cooked up this whole alibi that she had was posting them from a previous trip or whatever. Right. Like someone else was doing her a feed. Mm -hmm. And then there are girls that disappear on purpose during that time because they want the controversy or the stir. Right. Even though it's going to come out that you were not on the TV show. Do you go to the gym? I just started back, yeah. Which one did you join? Crunch. I've been a member. Mm -hmm. um, and you canceled it? Well, I didn't cancel it. I just stopped going for like nine months and I just started back again. Well, I joined LA Fitness and John and I have been going every day. Except for the weekend hours are fucking retarded. Actually, none of the hours are good for, um, for your schedule. for my schedule. As a nightclub entertainer, or a night owl, or a graveyard shift, or whatever, the other half of the population, it's just really not a good schedule. Um, so basically, on a weekday, I have to wait for them to open at five o'clock in the morning to go to the gym before bed. Uh -huh. And then Friday night, I was going to go to the gym after I took John to work. <coughs> I took him to work at 10, and then I went to the gym, and they were closed. Friday night, they closed at 10. Yeah, usually Friday and Saturdays, everything closes. I was like, what? 11. It was so, I was so irritated. And then I'm like, okay, fine. I'm definitely going to go Saturday after work. Or no, then I was going to go Friday night after work, and the gym doesn't open until noon. I'm not going to stay up until noon to go to the gym and then go to bed. Yeah, and they'd have to be up at four. The butt crack, out. yeah, no. Yeah, especially on a Saturday. I have to be up, uh, yeah. Well, I set my alarm for three on Saturday, and then I set my alarm for four inside just in case I oversleep. Because I have to be at Lipsy at 5.30. But we went every day for a week until the weekend came. What are you doing, cardio or weights? Um, or? On Tuesday, we did strength training. On Wednesday, we did cardio. And then on Thursday, we did cardio and strength training. Like the machines or um, I don't. I can't or? afford, okay, the first day we were there, we got a free trainer. Mm -hmm. And he did both. Like he taught us, he told us the importance of when you're doing the weights in the building, you can't break. Like he was like, look around the gym and everybody was sitting on the machines, just sitting there for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, most people sit between their reps. That's not good. Yeah, it shouldn't be more than like 60 seconds or something. Yeah, if you're, if, you're, if you're resting between your sets, your heart is cooling down. In order for you to burn fat, your heart rate must stay above 120 and it, you must not rest. So if you're gonna do a set of bicep curls, then do a set of, I don't know what, lats or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then go back to biceps, then do lats, then biceps, then lats. So that's what John and I were doing on Thursday, Friday, Wednesday. And then on Thursday we did both. Cardio, because John wasn't gonna do cardio at all. It also depends on what you're doing though. If you're trying to gain muscle mass, then you need to give your muscles a little, longer of a rest between sets mm -hmm. but if you're doing it for cardio then you got to keep it 
going. That's why I do cardio on the treadmill. Yeah. Well, he was, cause John wasn't going to do any cardio at all. And the guy is like, do you want to lose your stomach? And John's like, of course he goes, or do you want to build your muscle? He goes, I want to do both. And he goes, then you have to do cardio. The only way you're going to burn your stomach is if you do cardio. He goes, what good's big arms if you don't, if you have a big stomach. Also, you can build the muscles in your legs if you're doing like the treadmill or a bicycle. Uh -huh. And that's the biggest set of muscle group in your body. Mm -hmm. So when you build those muscles, they burn more energy than your upper body muscles do. So uh -huh. it keeps your metabolism Running. higher and you'll burn more calories even when you're not exercising because it takes more calories to sustain those muscles. Larger, larger lower body muscles. Well, that's good because every day this week or last week, I'm going to go tonight after training pass because the gym opens at five on Monday morning, Sunday night. It's a weird thing getting Sunday night. My Sunday night is your Monday morning. Uh, I did legs every day last week. The trainer had me doing weird stuff with like these things where I'm like doing squats. I hurt so bad I couldn't walk on Wednesday. <laughs> and then I did cardio again Wednesday night. And Wednesday night I did cardio and I was on the elliptical. And then Thursday I did both. But I downloaded an app called Workout. Mm -hmm. And it tells you like if you're trying to lose weight or whatever, it tells you what to do. So we are taking pictures of it and like going to each machine. But it's weird. Yeah, I like crunch. Um... I liked crunch, but they have no hot tub. They have no pool. Yeah. They have no steam room. They have no sauna. <laughs> <laughs> and she really does. But the other day, like on Tuesday, we didn't go to the steam room or the um, hot tub. And my legs hurt so bad. I was like, I should have sat in that hot tub for a minute. Do you have a whirlpool here at your complex? No. My old place did. This place just has a pool. And it's closed after dark. So again, fuck my schedule. That's when I like to go swimming at night. Yeah. When I go swimming at night, I go to Oakland Park in A1A. And get in that to the ocean. Oh, to the, to the ocean. Yeah, so nice there. I haven't been in the ocean in New Year's here. Yeah, it's been a minute for me too. How's your skin feel? Good. You love it? Yeah, I, did. I thought it was going to be like oily when I first put it on, mm -hmm. but it's not. Yeah, it's so, it's, I couldn't believe it. A girl um, recommended it to me and I get made up with Missy. And I tried it. I was like, holy crap. I couldn't believe it. I thought she was kidding. I mean, you look fishy at the store buying it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real woman buying Monistat. Excuse me. And I go to the counter and go, excuse me. <laughs> Do you have that modest debt? <laughs> I'm a real woman. One of my girlfriends said that her therapist told her to go buy tampons. I'm like, honey, they're just gonna look at you dumb in the store. <laughs> I can't imagine buying tampons. I don't need to be that real. Ever. I think some transgender person told me one time that she always kept a tampon in her purse in case she got pulled over. Is what does her driver's license say? I think she had it changed. Oh, okay. Or, or she was driving without a license, maybe. I don't know. Uh, who knows? She just dropped her tampon and tried She's to. She's got diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> Look at shit real bad. I'm just gonna sit on it. Gotta shit, gotta shit real bad. What if I don't need makeup and I'm just this beautiful? 
We should go like this. <laughs> <laughs> Highlight it. <laughs> That's all you need. You don't need all that makeup. You just do a show. Right. You have to wear makeup? I can't feel my face. I like when you're face. with somebody that's never seen drag makeup being done before. Uh -huh. You get to this point and they like, they're like you're doing like, it to them and they freak out. They freak the house down. I don't want to look like that. I don't want to look like that. I'm like, honey, I'm going to blend it. You'll be beautiful, I promise. And they're paying you, so they're freaking out extra fears because you're they're paying you to become a look like a clown. I hate painting people, but when I do, I never let them look at it until I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, if you hire me, you hire me because you like the way I look. So if you want to look like that, <laughs> yeah. sit down, shut up, and... Bite your tongue. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the same way. I learned the hard way. But I remember when I was working at Versace doing makeup, like they did a lot of proms and stuff, and their moms would be like, ah, ah, you have mascara on her cheek. Ah, ah. I'm like, I got it. Hold on, let me finish her face. <laughs> Like, and they freak out. I'm like, you want me to put the mascara down? Then go get a Q-tip and come back and finish your mascara? Okay, I can do that for you. It's called foundation. You can cover anything up. I know. Take a Xanax, Mom. Mmm! Splash Glitter, I think, is coming back out soon. I can't wait. I did a Get Made Up with Misty Eyes with Diamond Dunhill, and we were talking about Splash Glitter. And so I Googled it for it to put a picture of it in the thing, and I think they reformatted it. I think it's circle now instead of square. Mm. But I went to where I usually got my Splash Glitter, and they don't have it. So it's, I don't or know it if it's. It could been. be like in Europe or something. So there's. Uh, but I think it might be coming out soon. And for those of you watching, yes, I recorded a Get Made Up with Misty with Diamond Dunhill, but she made me promise not to post it until I have her permission. Or she died. Or she died! I cut it out a lot, but she talked about dying a lot in this video. One day, you will see this. Unless I die first and then you're fucked. Because she's already an 800-year-old Chinese woman. <laughs> <laughs> so you know she's going to outlive my ass. But, um, yes. I think that eventually she's going to be like, it's not that serious. But, I mean, I, went, I definitely had a phase where I didn't want anyone to know what I look like as a boy either. And then I was on hormones for five years, and I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> now you're not a boy. I'm not a boy anymore. Now you can see. But I think my main thing was tranny chasers. When you have a chaser, and that's another thing, I have a husband now, I really don't care. Because chasers, when they see you out of drag, they're like, oh, not interested. Like it ruins everything. But if they meet you as a girl first, usually they see you as a girl even without makeup on, if yeah. they're horny. <laughs> they'll be like knocking on your door and I'm like, I don't have any makeup on! And they're like, I don't care. We have a mutual friend who... We have a mutual friend? Yes. Who okay. is a... Escort? A boy drag queen, mm -hmm. but is also escorts as a transsexual woman. Okay. And she said that after the first couple of times, like, they don't care anymore. They just... Yeah. She doesn't even shave half the time. She just puts lip gloss and a pair of panties on and they're fine with it. Mm -hmm. I remember um, Stephen Arlang was my roommate once for many, many years. And he's like, girl... It's just a wig. All I need is the wig. And that was before I had long hair. I had hair like you. Do you have a business card? You need something hard? Yeah, I need a hard, hard edge. That works, thank you. So he's like, oh, it's just a wig. <laughs> so literally I would throw a wig on my head and some lipstick and you're good. Yep. Turn down the lights. And you're a woman. When you're horny, you're horny. And especially if you've already had it, it's, you know. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing probably with 
biological women like you know yeah when you first start dating them they're all made up and they have their their you know, wigs on and their and nails and, and their yeah. eyelashes and by the time you marry them it's <laughs> you they're you know, cake cakey mud on their face and rollers in their hair yeah. yeah it's very though I can't feel my face. So who else are you doing makeup with Misty's with? Tomorrow I'm recording with a Sherry Price, and that's it this week. I want to do once a week, but I did last week and I couldn't post it, so I'm doing two this week. So I have an extra in case something like that happened. Mm -hmm. So you'll be my third one posted. The Selena was the first one, right? Selena was the first, and then I did um, Tatiana Malanina from Texas. She was the girl at Trinity Palace last year. Yeah, and she's the one that suggested the Monistat. I gagged. I was like, Thank no. Thank you, Tatiana. Yeah. It's like Photoshop, but in real life. Like, it's a silky finish. I'm all for some good lighting and a little Photoshop. Hello. I wish I knew how to do that. But then at the same time, I'm kind of glad. Like, one of my girlfriends is so good at Photoshop, but all of her pictures are so Photoshopped. You hire her and she shows it to booking, not looking like her pictures. Well, I think the key to good Photoshop is you should look in your Photoshop like you do on stage. Yeah. Nobody's going to look this close up like they do in their pictures. Yeah. But when you're on stage, it's different. If you don't look like your Photoshop pictures, because on stage, the lighting and mm -hmm. the distance and alcohol and, <laughs> and alcohol. Yeah. I Photoshop myself so that I look like a drunk audience. That's funny. I like it. Yeah, no, I get it. Like, she has her tits done now, but I remember she used to have the hugest tits in all of her pictures. And I'm like, um, you know, when you show up, you're not going to have those, right? <laughs> but now she, she wear, has. Does she wear a breastplate? No. Oh. No, she didn't. The girls are funny. But yeah, I remember the first time you saw a breastplate? Me? Yeah. Mm, I think so. What did you think? Um, I don't know. I've never been like a huge fan. No, but I mean like what did you think when you saw that? Like not would you get one? I mean I thought they were interesting and... But there's a lot of really bad ones. Yeah, there are. I remember the first time I saw I thought it was a real tent. I think the first ones I saw were kind of not so great. The first ones I I've saw... I've seen some good ones. I was like, holy crap. That woman spent all her money on her tits and nothing on her ass or her face. Like, I remember thinking, wow, she got her tits done and she wasn't wearing hip pads or ass pads and she wasn't pumped in her face. She wasn't on hormones. She was literally a man with tits. And I was like, why? I was there, so there confused. Are some girls like that though and that's true and then i found out later that she the next time i saw her she didn't have her tits i was like oh it's a boo for queens i'm like how did you do that what what was that and she shared her secret I can't feel my face. I'm not even doing that song tonight. One of the girls in the show emailed me her songs and she's doing it. And I played it for a second to make sure it, I downloaded it. And now it's on my head. I can't feel my face when I'm with you. But I love it. Oh, we need to get together and write. Okay, so when you guys start seeing Misty Eyes recording songs, 
This one's gonna help me write them. Cause we make crazy stuff up. And yeah, like we'll be at work. work. Yeah. <laughs> and like... Like last night at Lips. What was this song? See, I don't remember, I have no memory retention. I'll say something on the spot, and then she'll come back with the second line, and yeah. then I'll come back with the third something line. something about having a penis in your pants, but I don't remember even what song it was. I don't either. So we need to get make a day or like um let's just get down, get a little wine or Yeah, we need to have a little cocktails. Cocktail flowing. and let our juices flow and um start rewriting these parodies. Cause Amanda's fucking brilliant. She's very smart. A clever girl. I'm not disciplined enough to sit there and do it by myself. Like, I need help. And I think the help would be brainstorming and be fun. Right, to bounce off someone else. Yeah. And then I sound like cats fighting when I sing, so I need someone to record them. See, that's teamwork. Together. Somebody told me today that you were a really cute boy. They were like, oh my God, I saw Amanda Austin. She was in a suit. Thank you. I'm actually gonna be hosting a show as a boy. Oh yeah? Yeah, supposedly, we'll see. Supposedly, yeah. I never tell people my bookings until they're official. Well, they're, it's supposedly official and they have the last meeting this week. Uh -huh. Well, how's it gonna be? I'm like, I'm like, are you sure you want me as a boy? Because I don't know if I'm the same person on the microphone. You know, because drag... Yeah, makeup it gives you superpowers. And, yeah. You can say anything and get away with it. And mm -hmm. if I say some of this stuff as a boy, that, especially if people... I mean, a lot of people know who I am mm -hmm. here now, so... It might work. But if I said some of the things that I say to people that I don't know out yeah. of drag, I'm not sure what kind of reaction I'm going to get. Where is this going to be? What's happening? Rumors. Um, it's a, it's like a dating thing. It's like a boys' night, and so that's why they want me there oh. as a boy. And it's kind of like Grinder meets the uh -huh. dating game. Yeah. Sort of. I tried to do something like that at a bar, and it didn't work, or I didn't even get started. But it wasn't rumors. So, but yeah, I was gonna do because there used to be um, a club in Fort Lauderdale before you called Cathode Ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You came on vacation it was still open before I moved. I think it, it closed like the year before I moved here like 10 years ago 11 years ago mm -hmm. and they had a pick a trick thing But the bar that I was going to do it at, it was shot down at the end because they said with Grinder they don't need to come to a bar and pick a trick. I was like, okay, whatever. Back to the brainstorming board. <laughs> and guess what? I thought of another idea and I went to a different bar. And that one is supposedly official, but hasn't started yet yeah. either. Well, we were supposed to start in July and then they said, no, we're going to start in August. So, but they still haven't given me I had the last meeting on Wednesday, but they haven't given me the exact day that we start. Yeah. And it's only once a month. It's not what like night? That. Oh, okay. Yeah. What night of the week will it be? Uh, Saturday. Okay. Which I don't... Work on lips yeah, anyway? I don't work at lips or... I don't have a regular gig on Saturdays. You're a resting woman. And I think it's going to be early, because, you know, I have to be up. Up for the flips? Uh, no, I have to be up for lips. Oh, you manage lips, that's right. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like to be in bed by 
12 or 1 at the very latest. Wow, Grandma. Well, I have to be up at 8. Oh, okay. And then yeah, I work 17 sense. hours the next day. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm up from 8 in the morning until 4 in the morning. It's right here. Uh-oh. Yeah, we usually, John and I usually sleep every day from 7 to 3. 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And that's when we go to the gym and then we go to bed about 8-ish. But sometimes his work schedule makes him go to work at 2, which means we have to get up at 1. So we have to count backwards. Like, okay, so if we go to bed at 7 and we wake up at 3, and we have to wake up at 1, so let's go to bed by 5. Because we want at least, to, if our body lets us sleep 8 hours, that's what our goal is. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you wake up before the alarm goes off, you do, but try to be in bed by five. Here's the goal. Here's the goal. So you can be a successful human. Yeah, I'd like to have at least eight hours. Mm -hmm. Especially as you get older. You need it's hard, it. It's hard on your body when you don't. Yeah. And you eat more when you don't sleep as much. Mm -hmm. And your metabolism slows down. Mm -hmm. Yep. When I first met you, you did Lady Gaga all the time. I thought of you as like the Lady Gaga girl. And I heard of a song the other day that was Lady Gaga, and I was like, oh my god, Amanda needs to do this, and I'm trying to remember what it was. No, I hardly ever do her. I think it was just when I started here, her new album had just come out. Mm -hmm. I think that was why. Like the, what was it called? Bad Romance? Mm-hmm. No, it was after that, I think. Or maybe, I don't know. No, I think it was Bad Romance. Yeah. That was the one where she had the red costume, right? Mm-hmm. In the video. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, 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 caught in a bad romance. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ship my pants. And then there's that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have you ever? Shit my pants? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Not since I was in you, diapers. I did once. I don't remember. I was a makeup artist at Versace. And I was in the middle of a makeover. And all of a sudden, I started having bubble guts. I was like, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. But I was determined to finish the makeup because I didn't know how long I'd be in the bathroom. And of course, the makeup counter is nowhere near the bathroom. You have to like go to a different floor or something. I don't remember what, but I remember it was on the other side of the building, on the other side of the world. I made it to the bathroom. I didn't make it to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I called my manager from right outside the bathroom. I was like, um, I am going home right now. And then I called housekeeping. And I was like, um, we need to clean up. <laughs> clean up aisle seven. Yeah. And I'm like, peace. When I worked at Morton's as a waiter, one Saturday night, it was like a really busy night. I think it was during season even. And there was a guy who, I don't know what happened, like he got too drunk or he, like food poisoning hit or whatever, but he went to the bathroom and he got to the bathroom and started to pull his pants down mm -hmm. and it was like projectile everywhere and it oh, went Lord. on his clothes, on the wall, all over mm -hmm. the toilet. And so he had to, he, somehow I guess his underwear didn't get soiled, but everything else did. So he oh, left man. all of his clothes in the bathroom and walked through the dining room in his underwear to leave. It felt really bad for him. Um, yeah, that's a fine dining restaurant. Yeah. That has got to be humiliating. I would have stayed in the bathroom with the door locked until it closed. And then when the customers left. I think like, it was like early in the night. Like five o'clock? Yeah, like seven o'clock. You we could were, be in that bathroom for seven hours. We were open to like 11 or 12 or something. That's traumatic. And then I heard another story this week where a mutual friend of mine was, she and I were performing together mm -hmm. and she got a little tipsy and I was very tipsy that night. And we were about to go, go on. I had just done my number and I was introducing her and she was not wearing, 
She was not tucked. She was not wearing panties, but she had on fishnets. Oh, I remember that. I and was there she, for that. She had to sh shit, and she had on. She told me she had a log in her fishnets during her number. Oh, I wasn't there. For it that. slipped out <laughs> during her number. Yeah, it was uh, in her fishnets. Oh no! What's that smell? <laughs> I've never shit on stage in my life. Never. Well, I'm basically wearing a diaper. When yeah. I'm in drag, so and you're it's not really gonna go to anywhere. Cinched and prodded. So I got on padded pants and <sighs> nine pairs of pantyhose. And yeah. Nine pairs of pants. Do you really wear nine pairs? Uh, well, the pants are like about three pairs of tights, but the pads are in that, and I wear three pairs of pantyhose, three pairs of tights, and a pair of fishnets over there. So you wear spandex pants and three pairs of tights. And a pair of fishnets. So, yeah. So you're very warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little swampy after a long day. Of swampy. Friend. That's a good word for it. She's got the swamp ass. You're so swampy. Last night at Lips, <laughs> I uh, photobombed at this table. They were taking their picture or whatever. Um, I have a group of them and I ran and jumped up and he goes, I feel tits on my back and I love it. <laughs> I love the smell of tits. And I was like. What do they smell like? I don't know. But it was me and another girl. But it was a biological. I don't know if she was biological or tranny. Were you the managing last night? Mm -hmm. The table. 43 have a tranny on it? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Like yeah. a blondish, bobbish. I think, so. I, think so. I think she was a tranny. I'm not sure. But he was. it was me next to her in front of these people. And he goes, "There's. I love the smell of tits. And I go, what about ball sweat and pantyhose? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's my favorite smell. Mm. The show's over and he was obviously very full. To the rim. <laughs> but it was a kiki. I love photobombing at Lips because it's always welcomed. In other places, I don't photobomb so much. They're like, who are you, bitch? Get out of my picture. Done. I can't feel my face. And we're doing a lot of painting and not so much talking, too. Yeah. I have done it in 25. Oh, yeah, I can paint in 25 minutes as well, if needed. Bitch, one time I woke up on a Saturday, my alarm went off at f my alarm clock goes off at five, telling me I have to be there at five thirty, which means put your eyelashes on, put your hair on, and get out the door. I was dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was there by five thirty, and I didn't look hideous. Like everyone's like, "Oh my gosh, you did a really good job on your face." I'm sure I skipped lots of steps, but right, I looked good. Well, the other week when I was not feeling well. Oh yeah, Sunday night. And then. I decided at 10 o'clock I would pack a bag, shave, and... Or not shave. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I shaved. Yeah, you told me you didn't. Yeah, I didn't shave. But the theme was goth, and I had no idea where my goth mm -hmm. stuff was. I think I spent more time trying to find that, and then... What favorite, what's your favorite mascara? Um, this one. It's like three dollars a tube and it lasts forever. Wow. And it doesn't, I'm not allergic to it. And I think it's waterproof. Yep. But it still comes off fairly easy. Yeah. 
Huh, I've got like ten tubes and I don't know which one I like. Um, can this is like on the counter at the in the little. Oh, place like a, 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 Aziz the across beauty, the street. The supply, yep. All right, this is something I've done in all my get made up with Misty videos. Um, pick out and ask Misty if it has a scribble or an R. Don't do that. Okay, here's a good one. Okay. This one's kind of, we have this problem sometimes. We're, all right, hey guys, it's Misty Eyes and Amanda Austin. And we're going to do an Ask Misty while we are getting ready for work. All right, dear Misty, my boyfriend is a drag queen and I, a woman, often travel with him to help with his stage anxiety and his makeup. Recently, I was helping him take his stuff into the dressing area and another queen was rude to me and made it clear I was not welcome back there. I felt awful. Is this normal? Thanks. All right, you go first. Well, I think it depends on the venue because a lot of times, like we're in a show we do every week together. So we know each other, we trust each other and we all do our own hair and makeup and unless there's someone in a number that we're doing that particular night, we don't really allow visitors in the dressing room mm -hmm. because we trust each other but we don't necessarily know the other people that are in there. So it just depends on the venue, what the rules are. Generally, I don't like people in the dressing room that I don't know because sometimes if you're in a hurry and you're running to change or something, you'll throw down jewelry and I've had that walk off, I'll throw down my tips, you know, I've had those walk off and if you kind of control the number of people that are in the dressing room, then you have less problems with that. And also, there's another gig that I do once a month and there's four of us and literally it's the size of like a public restroom. So if you can imagine four queens in a room that's already full of stuff that's not meant to be a dressing room, there's not space. So sometimes it can be security issues, sometimes it can be um, space issues, and then sometimes it's just girls, maybe because they're, I don't know if they were trans performers or if they were male performers, but I would kind of feel a little uncomfortable if I was in a state of undress as a man for a biological woman to be there. So that, that could be it, but they shouldn't have been rude, they should have just ask you nicely or maybe explain the reason why but sometimes when you're in a hurry you're doing a show or there's alcohol involved shit happens so don't take it personally and yes it is sometimes common yes um the first question you ask is or the last question rather is this normal yes i definitely Yes, I definitely think 100% it is normal. I remember the first time it happened to me, I was in Orlando. Um, I was at the Parliament House and I've performed there many times and I've done pageants there and competitions there. And um, It was a show that I was not in and I went backstage and I remember Darcel, the MC, snapped at me. It was in the middle of a show and she's like, you can't be back here. And I'm like, I wasn't in drag and it was years ago when I was not transitioning. And I was like, it's Misty Eyes. And she's like, you can't be back here. I'll buy you a drink after the show, meet me at the bar after the show. But I was also mortified and embarrassed and humiliated and I left. I was like, and I had a taste in my mouth like I never wanted to come back. But yes, like Amanda said, every dressing room that I know of, you can't be backstage unless you're in the show. Now, in your situation, you're helping your boyfriend bring his stuff backstage. I think absolutely 100% in any situation, if someone is carrying your luggage, for example, the Trendy Palace, you're welcome to help them bring in their stuff, but after you bring in their stuff, that is the time for you to exit and leave. Um, unless, of course, you're doing her, his hair or makeup and then usually that would be a pageant scenario and everyone in a pageant is allowed one helper. Um, but yes, I have told many, many, many people they are welcome backstage at Trendy Palace. And um, I try to do it in the nicest way possible. Like, honey, you can't be backstage. But no matter how I say it, they always think I'm a huge bitch and it's not done, you know, whatever. And there's no nice way to do it. So usually I try to get someone else to do it. Like, because I don't want to be the evil one. But the reality is, like Amanda said, Stuff disappears backstage all the time. And earrings, jewelry, tops, skirts, whatever. And yes, there are known drag queens that are kleptomaniacs. And then they're like, you don't have any idea who it is. And you're like, um, did anybody see my whatever? 
you definitely don't want to be the guest or the friend of somebody backstage and you're like, um, something went missing and all, everyone's going to blame you, you because they don't know you. So on that situation, I would definitely not want to be backstage um, because then you're going to be blamed for something that somebody else did. And they could, and I'm not going to say that would help someone as an alibi. Be like, it wasn't me. It was that bitch over there. If they were going to be a klepto or whatever. But um, drag queens are known for stealing anyway, in general. Um, or at least a lot of them are. I don't think so much in the shows that I work in. Very few theft happens. Knock on wood, I haven't had anything stolen in like three years. but Yeah. But it happens. Or from normally what happens at Trying Pals is like somebody's like, can I borrow your lip gloss? And then it never comes back. But I know who has it. Or bonding glue or whatever. Right. Um, but again, it's gone. But yes, I'm so sorry that you felt uncomfortable in the dressing area. Um, but a lot of times, especially the old bills, there was a couch. And... Um, a lot of girls or the trannies would bring their boyfriends or their tricks or their sugar daddies or their whatever and the daddies would sit backstage and just watch the girls get changed. Creepy. And that's creepy McCreeperson. And it's like, um, no, that's not okay. You can't have your anybody back here because they just sit there on the couch and literally stare at all the girls. And backstage there's titties out and dicks out and no, that's not okay. So, um, for security issues and fight reasons and theft reasons and just creepy reasons, nobody's allowed backstage unless you're in the show. And that's, at least for my show specifically, and I think most shows in the world, um, very few backstages allow anyone to come back there. I remember old Voodoo, everyone that thought they were a VIP could run into the dressing room, but their dressing room was like an entire bar area. So it wasn't unless you're lucky as to obvious. have your own like private dressing room. Oh yeah, if you have your own private dressing room, then anybody you want can be in there. But generally speaking, no, that is very normal for them to escort you out. But again, like Amanda said, um, they should have been nice about it. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to be nice in telling somebody that they can't do something they want to do. Especially when that's the ninth time you've done it in the past 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, especially the 10 minutes. You're like, oh, you can't be back here. And then it's your first time, but it's my 20th time saying you can't be back here. So now on Sundays, thank God, we have a security guard watching the dressing room. And people still manage to run backstage, but it's very few now because he helps with that. But anyways, that was an Ask Misty with Misty Eyes and Amanda Austin. Loving you is easy. Yeah, so that was cute. That was a good question. Have you ever had that happen to you? Helping a friend backstage and mm. uh, squirt it out? Well, I think when a lot of new girls start, like they're unsure of hair or makeup or, mm -hmm. you know, afraid of asking. Like, you know, if we're together, we'll ask each other for a zip up or whatever. But when you're brand new and you feel like, you know, you're there mm -hmm. alone, it makes it a little bit easier when you have somebody on your side. But to help you with your shoes or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, moral support or. Because it can be intimidating going into a dressing room, especially with a big cast like we have when there's 11 girls and yeah. you don't know anybody. At all. That's definitely true. I just can't, the worst part is I can't stand when it's a small space mm -hmm. and there's literally someone standing against you like this. And you're like, you're trying to change clothes. Lips dressing rooms like that. Yeah. I'm like, why are you in here? Yeah. We don't have enough room as it For is. Us. Why are you in here? Yeah. What is the weirdest dressing room you've ever gotten ready in? Um, <laughs> I almost said monkey business, but I have one better, even better than that. Um, one time, Noel Leon, who's on cast with us at Trady Palace, and I went to, I think it was Tampa, to do this uh, gig at this bar where we didn't really know anything about it other than where it was and the person who was putting it on was a DJ and they were doing parties that they had like a part, like a roaming party that mm -hmm. it was put on by the same people, but it was in different, different bars. Venues. So they hired us to do this, um, gig. And I was like, okay, we have a dressing room, right? And she's like, yeah, there's, there's not a dressing room, but there's an office. It's private. It's secure. You know, they'll let you in. There's decent lighting. So we get there and there's no office. 
and there's wow. no dressing room. And we were doing um, just her and I. I think there might have been one more person in the show. Maybe I can't remember. I think it was just her and I though. But it was like a quick change thing where mm -hmm. we did like three or four numbers each and we would do a number talk for a second. I would introduce her. She would come out, do a number talk for a second, introduce me. So they're like, you can use the women's bathroom. Mm -hmm. So we go into the women's bathroom and it's two stalls in the women's bathroom mm -hmm. and it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. And so she and I ended up getting, barricading ourselves in the handicapped stall, which is, you know, just yeah, a little bit bigger. Like a double wide. Yeah. yeah. And she had brought like big coats and costumes Free -free. and I had like multiple wigs and it was literally, we changed both of us in a, in a toilet stall, not just in the bathroom, but in a stall with all of our stuff. Uh -huh. so Thank God it was just the two of you. Right. So that was the tightest one I've ever done. But I, we change it in all kinds of places depending on where we I've are. done so many bathrooms I can't even tell you. Like, I remember I did a club in West Palm Beach where they put a sign on the door saying this is the dressing room, but girls were still coming in using the bathroom. There's no... Um, and talk about anxiety. Ooh. Like yeah. Really bad anxiety. And you're like, oh god, what if she pees on my stuff? Right. <laughs> yeah, because you don't have a choice in that situation. But my weirdest dressing room ever, I was performing in New York City, and I can't remember the name of the bar, but I was also performing with Noel. And it was behind the bar. Okay, there was a there was like a long strip bar, and behind the bar was a trap door with a step ladder. And you had to go down the step ladder into an underground kitchen. And the underground kitchen was super hot and sweaty. And that is where they cooked the food and then somehow put it up the step ladder to whoever ordered food. Um, but we had to dress downstairs in the basement, in the kitchen, no mirrors. So we had to like, girl, look at my eyes, am I okay? And then in high heels, climb up a, <laughs> I guess a fireman's ladder, just a regular ladder, not a step ladder. It was like a regular ladder. And the bartender is standing above the trap door with one leg on this side and one leg on this side. And you're coming up between his legs. And I'm like, oh my God. And the door is open the whole time. So you're like, oh my God, what if he steps awesome. in the hole? But he's standing above the hole like this. And I'm like. While he was serving at the bar. Yeah. Wow. So it was me and Noel. We kept going up and down this ladder and performing our numbers. It was the scariest weirdest, smallest, hottest dressing room I've ever, I've ever been in. And it was um, tragic. But we had a good time. But it was still really weird. All right, guys, that was an enjoyable video for us to watch. <laughs> Amanda, tell the kids how to stalk you on the internet. You can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash Amanda Austin drag or you can find me on Instagram at uh, Amanda Austin drag you only have Instagram and Facebook yep no Twitter or so I'm on Twitter too I think it's Amanda Austin drag on Twitter I'll look yep. for it no YouTube no I'm not on YouTube that's alright anyways thank you guys for watching loving you CZ bye